the information highway girdles the world, straddles continents, and sometimes even reaches the more accessible parts of Scotland. Currently touring his homeland is one of Scotland's favorite sons and one of the most enviably successful, endlessly inventive comic minds of his generation. He's standing by our tartan-draped Scottish satellite downlink now as I turn smoothly towards our interactive monitor and say, can you hear me, Billy Connolly? Yes, Clive, I can, loud and clear. Billy, you've been playing some pretty out-of-the-way places on this tour. Have you been meeting any out-of-the-way characters? Oh, yeah. Well, out-of-the-way places tend to produ produce sort of out-of-the-way characters. When we were up north there, I, I never met the man, I must say, but I was going fishing, and a guy said, if you want to know anything about the fishing round here, just ask Big Dick McNocker. And I thought, I thought it was a joke. I was lying on the floor, but there's a guy. There's a guy up here who rejoices in the title of Big Dick McNocker. So I was thinking of changing my name to, to Big Willie Condomly. Could be a more sort of sexy position. Billy, what's the weirdest place you've ever played in your career? In my career, I must say, the strangest place I've ever played for me was Das Island in the Gulf of Arabia. It's just off Abu Dhabi. And they process all the natural gas for Japan. And it's run by a Scottish guy called Andy Williams. And there's hundreds of men there, no women at all. Hundreds of guys. And they have entertainers over there now and again. And it's brilliant. I must tell you, there's an old gay guy there. He was an engineer. And he used to gr grow plants and all that around the place. It's very civilized, the whole affair. And he, he was the gardener. And when he, it was coming time to retire, and he said, could I stay on and, and do, do the flowers and stuff? And they said, of course. And they let him stay on there. And they gave him 12 Arab guys to help him plant the flowers. <laughs> and they're known as the Queen's Park Rangers. <laughs> I've got to get there. Billy, I, I hear you've acquired a tattoo since we last spoke. It's great, because I'm 51. And I thought, let's do something, you know? I thought, let's, let's, let's be brave again, the way I was when I grew my hair and had my ears pierced and all that. I thought, let's get the old tattoo, because you're a long time dead. Or as they say in Scotland, you're looking at the lid for a long, long time. Well, could you go another stage? What about body piercing? I hear it's getting very fashionable again. Well, that's the next thing for me. I think I'll get my nipples pierced. You know, I, I think I'd draw the line at the willy. Some guys have the willy done, you know, and the lips and the eyebrows. But I think maybe the nipples would be rather daring and risky. I used to have pierced ears, but one day I was outside Harrods and, and a traffic warden came along and, and he'd ear rings and I thought, oh, that's the end, it's all over. <laughs> and I took them out. But I doubt if we're going to meet many traffic wardens with pierced tits, you know, so I think I'll go for the end. Yeah, maybe get little bells on them or something. Billy, you're living in America now and there have been a lot of high-profile trials recently. Did you follow the Bobbitt case? They seem to have trouble with regular sex Americans, but when it comes to, like, cutting people's willies off, there doesn't seem to be a problem. <laughs> you know, old Lorena Bobbitt, she's a national hero now. And I think the sales of chain mail pyjamas with, with combination locks have soared. I'll tell you, she did a dreadful thing, that Lorena Bobbitt, because her husband's name is John Wayne Bobbitt. So in doing that, she cut America's willy off. <laughs> you know, there's, there's a sort of national panic, men clutching themselves. It's a very dangerous place to be. And what did you make of the Jeffrey Dahmer case? Oh, Jeffrey Dahmer, yeah, he was pretty weird. He was making love to people and killing them and eating them. I'm not sure what order he was doing it in. It took a month to decide whether or not he was sane. I mean, the guy eats people. I mean, dip me in vinegar and call me a fish supper. Do you mean the same cannibals? Billy, were you in Los Angeles when the earthquake happened? No, Clive, I was, I was in England when the whole thing occurred. As a matter of fact, I'm never there, I'm never there when anything happens and my wife's getting really suspicious. <laughs> I was in Britain when the, the big riots happened and when the huge fires and mudslides were there, I was in Australia and she thinks I'm kind of clairvoyant. She thinks I see them coming and get off my bloody mark, you know. Like everybody's getting deeply suspicious. But actually, I'm getting kind of jealous because I've never really been in a big earthquake. I've only been in a wee, tiny one. It was like an elevator just taken off, you know. And I was kind of drunk. And I was watching television, eating a cheeseburger. It was a long, long time ago. And there was a Japanese newsreader on television. And I was sitting watching her. And the, t the, the earthquake was obviously in the same place where she was. And it went, and she said on television, what was that? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was as near as I ever got.
Yeah, they are quick. And I feel so cheated and jealous. Really, the last time I saw you on the big screen was in Indecent Proposal, where you played an auctioneer. What was the Hollywood experience like? Oh, it was brilliant. It was especially good because I was on tour at the time. I was in Nova Scotia. And Adrian Lyne, the director, phoned and said, would I come and do this? And he said, it's only two days' work if you want to. And I said, sure. And the, the only way I could get there was by Learjet, which was absolutely... I'd never been in a Learjet before. And whoosh. And you know, I discovered, to my extreme disappointment, that there's no lavvy, there's no toilet on a Learjet. <laughs> we, we had to pull in... This is uh, Nova Scotia to Hollywood. We had to pull in at Milwaukee for a pee or Minneapolis or something. <laughs> And it, it, since then, I've enjoyed it, just thinking of all these great magnates and billionaires with their legs crossed in the sky. <laughs> Billy, I've been uh, talking to you by satellite all over the planet Earth for what seems like years, and neither of us is getting any younger. Are you wearing spectacles yet? I, I do. I, have, I, have, I got them when I was 50. I got, I got tired of that, complaining of the lighting in Indian restaurants. What are they going to do something that's bloody light? <laughs> So I got glasses and I kind of fancy myself in them. I look reasonably intelligent wearing my glasses. But the, the most disconcerting thing about ageing, I find, is the rapid growth of nasal hair. <laughs> I, do, I don't know why it should accelerate. What, what, what is it about getting old? You need more hair in your damn nose. And your ears up and swoosh. And my pubic hair has gone grey. Funnily enough, on one side, it's kind of strange. It's just silvery grey. And it's made my willy look really weird. It's like a nest of baby gerbils in newspaper. It looks, it looks very, very odd. I have to do it in the dark now. No more posing around in the quilt for me, I'm afraid. And I've got the winter plumage too, you see it? I look as if I'm wearing a McGranny's Davy Crockett hat. But there you go. Billy, what kind of old man do you think you're going to be? Are you going to I've... mellow out? No, I'm going to be a nuisance. I, I fully intend to be a nuisance. I've been a nuisance all my life. And I would like to remain, I'd like to become a real old nuisance. I want to really irritate the church in particular. I want to irritate those hypocrites and charlatans. I want to, sh when they come away with that jargon, I want to go into cathedrals. And when they say, I am one in him, and he in me, and we are one, I'm going to say, rubbish! <laughs> I'll be the old guy in the stall shouting, rubbish! Because I hate what they've done to Scotland. Those wee grey Presbyterian men. We're a nation of men who wear kilts and no bloody underwear. And they're saying, you shall not. Give me a break. <laughs> Billy, I've got a date in the tattoo parlour, so thank you for those insights into life, age and death. Missing you already, Clive. <laughs>